Okay, hello folks. This is a, a short video for cockpit builders to share the status of this uh, six degree of freedom motion platform and the uh, actually the installation of the uh, 4K laser projectors. Uh, these projectors are the uh, Optima ZH406ST short throw. They're the same uh, throw ratio as the previous um, 1080 GT projectors and the Darby I guess as well. Anyway, uh, finally got around to installing these. Uh, getting set up for the approach into Munich and uh, on the downwind lake here for the uh, ILS uh, 28 right. So uh, there's a price to be paid for everything and so uh, these uh, 4K projectors uh, installed fairly nicely and uh, actually they take 4K input. Uh, I uh, purchased a uh, RTX 3090 Founders Edition card. Managed to find one. You can't get them now. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so uh, that feeds the projectors a 4K input and the projectors have the ability to downscale uh, to uh, HD resolution. So that's what you're seeing here. Um, in the warping uh, blending process you lose about 30 <clears throat> percent excuse me of the uh, of the pixels so the resultant uh, loss is negated by the downscaling to uh, HD resolution uh, that was the uh, the intent uh, all along in going to the 4k now the uh, 4k resolution <clears throat> actually uh, and the 4K projectors, these are uh, again laser projectors, the consistency from projector to projector is really nice. Um, you don't see the variation that uh, you typically see with bulb, the, uh, the GT1080 uh, HD projectors where the bulb would have variation uh, across the screen of one projector into another. Tweaking those was hopeless. Uh, these projectors are right out of the box. I haven't done anything to the menu system, so uh, the color is what you see, the resolution is what you see. This is the latest uh, NVIDIA uh, driver. They call it their latest uh, game driver as of uh, April 14th. So, let's see. Uh, give you a wide-angle shot of the cockpit here. Uh, the sim is working really well. Uh, again, I have uh, two computers, one for the sim running P3D version 4.5. Uh, five, version 5 doesn't seem to want to work with some of the flight illusion gauges and so on. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I decided for now to, to uh, leave it at version 4.5. And. Um, at this point, the motion software, I'm running it right now. Got a nice little bit of uh, movement in the cockpit as we're on this downwind leg. And that's been very reliable and working quite well. So um, let's see, what else can I tell you about these laser projectors? I use the same uh, 3D printed mounting brackets to uh, hold the projectors in place. Uh, the laser projectors are a little bit heavier and what I encountered with the motion platform was a little bit of resonance. So I negated that resonance by putting uh, rubber standoffs at each corner of each projector. And that dampened that out fairly nicely. Uh, when you change the mass of something, its resonant frequency changes. So that was the issue there. But uh, that seems to be resolved, so uh, I feel pretty good about that. Um, the um, I tried different resolutions on these projectors, that is the native resolution. So these are running at uh, 4096 by 2160, and uh, that's being fed into the projectors as I mentioned. Um, this is, uh, these are also HDR projectors, uh, or, but I think P3D doesn't have any of that support. So, nor does P3D, as far as I know, have uh, 4K support. So, this is kind of what you're getting uh, without any modifications using uh, 4 point, version 4.5 of P3D. Okay. 
Got a little squiggly there. I'm running uh, again uh, two computers. One is for the uh, simulator and the other is for the flight model. The sim computer is a fairly high-end gaming computer. It's uh, i7. It's not the latest and greatest, but it's running at 4.5 uh, uh, gigahertz. So it's, uh, it's fast enough for this uh, single core usage in P3D. Uh, if there's a way to speed that up, that would definitely improve things. I have noticed that uh, the warping and blending with the projectors is uh, a lot easier uh, with these laser projectors for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that uh, ended up being a fairly simple process to set the warping and blending up. I better start slowing this thing down, so let me get flaps one, flaps five, and uh, reduce speed flaps five. I'll uh, do an auto land into Munich so you can uh, I'll have a better chance of holding this phone camera. It's uh, it's hard to fly and take video at the same time. You guys know that. I'm running Active Sky, the older version. Uh, it seems to work well. They've got they've got a check. We have a new uh, version out, but I haven't upgraded to that. You know, it's always the plus and minus when you upgrade constantly to the latest thing. Can you screw something else up? Uh, anybody who's been in the sim uh, arena for a while knows that. I've got, um, I'm using um, the PSYOC code to control this uh, throttle. This is a real 737 throttle. Same thing that Fred is using. In fact, Fred uh, gave me the software he got from the fellow in Spain and I modified it according to my needs with uh, proper settings in PSYOC for the sensors and the uh, switches and all that stuff. Uh, it's been working fairly well. Okay, flaps 1.5. Uh, of course, I'm using uh, Flight Deck Solutions gear. I really love it. It's, uh, it's been very stable. Um, and uh, these are the old USB units. They're, they've gone to uh, they've gone to his Ethernet systems now, which is fine. But uh, it's uh, there's some practical limits to upgrading. Okay, so here's a side view, left side of the cockpit. What I find with the laser projector in general is that it's just more crisp and more consistent. And we've got a little uh, local stratus here, so it's going to get foggy on us. It'll clear up. Okay, well that's interesting. A 4K view of fog. I'll, I'll go back to the cockpit. Okay, pro, uh, protocol's out the window here. I'm just trying to fly this thing into the airport. So we're going to be doing a left uh, turn. And uh, But it is kind of neat to see the clouds move by and you get a little hint of uh, the ground once in a while. Very much like the real deal when you're flying uh, either general aviation or in an airliner like this 737. Uh, this flight model, by the way, is uh, set up for the 737-800, and uh, Sim Avionics has just been great. Um, they, uh, it's become very stable, and uh, it just seems to work, which is what you want with anything. <coughs> Got my control column set up here. Those have been nice. And I'm going to try to do a uh, simulated uh, control loading on this so that basically when, uh, when it's flying under autopilot, it'll, it'll kind of move like that, even though it's not really following the simulator. But that's kind of what happens when, uh, when you're flying along in autopilot. The controls are moving somewhat like that. That might add a hint of uh, additional uh, sim immersion. Well, here we go into a left turn. I love the motion platform, how it induces a sense of, uh, of uh, movement physiologically. Your body, body senses that. Oh, 
Okay, I'm set up for the ILS. Radio All right, already. Clear out the left hand side. So, with the uh, 1080 HD projectors, this was a lot. Uh, well, for one thing, it wasn't even. The, the display, the consistency and color contrast varied quite a bit and it just was kind of blurry and uh, this is greatly improved uh, uh, over the uh, the bulb type projectors. Uh, in addition the laser, uh, this uh, ZH406ST, the, the laser is uh, stated to last about 30,000 hours so uh, that's a real plus there. Uh, although the projector bulbs on the uh, 1080 uh, HD projectors have gone down in price to less than $100. Uh, nonetheless, it's pain to change about. Then you get color variations again when you do that. So uh, I gave up trying to adjust the, the 1080s. It was just pain in the butt. Okay, we're coming in here. I'm going to do a uh, direct to the next waypoint. We'll go ahead and set up for approach capture. And we'll see if we can get... Uh, no, it's not letting us do an auto land. Great. Okay, well, we'll I'll try to control this thing coming down. Feel free to fast forward on any of this. Uh, I know it can be a little boring. So we're still in a left turn, about to level off. And there it goes. Really subtle feel of uh, returning to straight and level. You, you have the, uh, the butt kicker in uh, operation, so you get a little bit of the rumble in your seat. In my case, I have uh, uh, first officer and, and captain uh, transducers, audio transducers set up in the seat. So that basically uh, allows you to get a sense of vibration. And that of course is synchronized with the, uh, the visuals and the, uh, the simulator and of course the motion platform. So when you're taxiing along you uh, hit a runway bump or a taxi bump, you feel that. Okay, so um, we can see here that coming up on the ILS it says we want to be 5,000 or above. Well, I'm a little bit low. That's okay. Back in the soup. Now you can see the bottom of my projector here. This is uh, how it, it ends up blending out. Show you the top side here. This projector is made of uh, regular Formica. I bought the matte finish Formica for that cabinet shops typically buy. And uh, it's 12 feet long. And so I uh, ended up cutting it down so it got the proper uh, diameter that I was looking for and then I in this the center here you can kind of see the center here I ended up uh, bringing it uh, uh, together and gluing it with uh, structural epoxy putting a joint in there and sanding it on the front I then painted the entire projector screen with a kilts primer white kilts primer uh, there's there's just dozens of projector screen paints and I may uh, I may experiment with a gray paint next because the laser uh, is, is pretty bright and you can uh, take advantage of some of the characteristics of using a darker screen. Now I uh, if you look at the the screen here you can see that there's a little bit of variation between the left screen and the center screen and uh, the dynamic range of the cameras uh, is actually emphasizing this in uh, through the naked eye 
you really it's hard to even see these uh, the blending that said I um, I only aligned it I really didn't focus on any uh, edge blending or or a color blending at all this is this is basically a first cut at uh, a warp display okay we're coming up on the uh, on the localizer we've captured the localizer <coughs> we're a little bit low so this is going to uh, take a little bit of time for us to get down down to the glide slope that is I don't know uh, most guys are using some kind of a weather program it really adds a great deal of uh, realism to the sim experience and uh, this is a real-time weather with active sky and uh, they've come with their new version they've, they've done a great job it's actually uh, quite a bit improved from what I understand okay so straight ahead I'm gonna put this take it out of the wide-angle mode and on the camera and give you a straight ahead normal one-time uh, res uh, resolution on the camera okay the glide slope is alive so we're about to start our descent and um, change the uh, range to 10 miles see I've got to uh, the terrain on the first officer's side and the weather on the uh, captain's side here. You know what? It, lo <laughs> it looks like I'm landing at uh, a, a general aviation runway. It's rather narrow. Um, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Maybe not. No, I don't think that's the case. They have uh, dual taxiways to the left there. Munich has uh, left and right uh, runways and uh, of course the in and out taxiways so this is the main runway okay coming up on uh, about five miles we'll go ahead and get the gear down okay nose gear down and locked three gear, gear down and locked auto brake set three so the um, speed brake is armed, gear is down and locked, and flaps will set 30. And we'll set our V ref for uh, 5 over ref. Let me see if the command will let us do, just not going to let us do an auto land. Okay, Captain Crew, anybody else take your seat for landing? So I gotta say, uh, these projectors uh, really enhance this experience. Uh, I'm real happy with them. So if you're thinking about uh, purchasing uh, projectors for a warped uh, wraparound display, uh, seriously consider. Now, um, again, uh, this is a, a beer budget simulator and display so uh, I've actually it's not collimated this is basically from the, uh, the captain's viewpoint if I switch over here to the first officer approaching two six right that's straight ahead and then for him to see really what I'm seeing you gotta angle it a little bit so when I set this up I decided to have it set up so that uh, it would represent the captain's viewpoint and those that I have fly with me I just tell them where to look and that works out pretty good okay how am I gonna do this coming up so uh, autopilot disengage and uh, using my knee to steer this thing uh, This is a controlled crash. Okay. Okay, let's get down here. 
Okay, we're gonna bounce around a little bit. Got opposing traffic on the runway, that's cool. No, he's actually landing. Speed brakes. Reverse. And uh, manual braking to come to a stop here. All right, well, I'll go back in the wide angle mode here. You can kind of see uh, how nice the view is. Get a little bit of rumble uh, and when you land the motion platform. Uh, I've been tweaking the motion cues so that um, they really, it's kind of critical because if you have them set where it's more realistic vibration, it just shakes the hell out of all your gear. So I've got a, a compromise that I've settled on. So I'm going to stop this and uh, kind of angle the camera over towards the, uh, the terminal and then I'll shut the video down. So hope this was interesting, maybe a little longer than it should be, but uh, that's it. Take care.